In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful, may the peace and blessings of Allah the Exalted be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his purified progeny. And may the wrath and curse of Allah be upon their enemies. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the last episode, we showed the clip of some of the Nasabi propagandists bothering the Shia zu Zuwar and showing verses of the Quran to try say that the Shia are committing shirk and that them calling the Imams is pointless because Allah says in tada'uhum la yasma'u du'a'akum wa law sami'u mastajabu lakum so if you call them they will not listen to your call and even if they could uh, you know uh, hear they could not respond to your call and of course this is because Allah azza wa jal he did not grant this to these idols who in the beginning were completely inanimate objects. So we explain that Allah when he says that if you call them and they do not answer your call, this was talking about the inanimate objects and idols which the mushrikeen of Quraysh worshipped and considered gods. And we showed that even Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him said to the mushrikeen it's within the Holy Quran where you know when you call them or call upon them do they hear you? So he used the same argument which Allah presented to the mushrikeen later on. And we finished off by saying that the Prophet Muhammad even his mere spit could heal the eyes of Imam Ali And we say that where's the proof that these miracles of the Prophet stop after his physical departure on this world? Someone might come and say that, okay, the Prophet Muhammad okay, he was a human. The Quran says, he says he is a bashar. But yes, in the form of eating, drinking, we see that yes, he is a human in this sense. But he is not a human in the sense of us that he, uh, as normal human beings, we don't have these types of miracles. That even our saliva can be healing like his. And this is due to Allah Azza wa Jal bestowing an honorable and high and exalted status upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, making him the best of creation. And we also see that many Prophets had miracles and the Imams themselves also had types of miracles to display their Imamah to people. So what we want to do is that we went through the verse, if you call them, they will not listen to you. Why? Because these are inanimate objects and idols. And then we, the last part of the verse says, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ مِثْلُ خَبِيرٌ Allah Azza wa Jal says that on the day of judgment that these idols, they were disassociated from you. But how is this since from the beginning they were inanimate objects? Before we go into this dear brothers and sisters, I mentioned that we were going to mention a discussion but that occurred between Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and Abu Hanifa. We find this in Wasail al Shia, Biharul Anwar, and other books of the Shia. And what happens is that Imam Sadiq salam was eating and he said a particular phrase and sentence which Abu Hanifa considered as shirk, as polytheism, as associating partners with Allah. Because we mentioned the verse that the Prophet Muhammad can give rizq according to the Quran by the permission of Allah. This is very clear in the Quran. But let's see how this verse was used. A discussion between Imam Sadiq and Abu Hanifa. So Imam Sadiq, it says that once was eating food with Abu Hanifa. And after finishing Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salam, the sixth Imam raised his hand from his food and expressed gratitude. Where he said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allahumma hadha mink. وَمِنْ رَسُولِكْ O oh Allah, I thank Allah who is the sustainer of all worlds. O oh Allah, this was a blessing from you as well as your Prophet. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, the sixth Imam, he thanked Allah and then he thanked what? The Prophet. And he said that this is a blessing from, this is from you, Mink wamin rasulik and from your messenger. How can this be? After Imam Sadiq alayhi salam expressed his gratitude to Allah and the messenger, which is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Hanifa he says what? He states the following, or he says the following. فقال Abu Hanifa, يا أبا عبد الله أجعلت مع الله شريكا did you associate partners, O 
uh, Imam Sadiq with Allah. So Abu Hanifa, according to this, he accuses the sixth Imam of shirk, which is of course very disrespectful from his side. And we know that he obviously did not understand the true status of the Imams alayhim salam. Oh, actually, even if we say he did, he didn't follow them and he remained stubborn in what he followed. So he accused Imam Sadiq alayhi salam of shirk according to this narration of polytheism, of associating partners of Allah. So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he told him, Waylik, uh, you know, be careful because Allah says in his book, if only they had been content with what Allah and his messenger had gave them and had said sufficient unto us is Allah, Allah and his messenger will soon give out of their grace. So this is another verse that he quotes and the verse that we mentioned in the previous episode about the Prophet Muhammad according to the Quran is able to give rizq, uh, sustenance by the permission of Allah. This was the verse that he also quoted um, because Allah and his messenger enriched them out of his grace. So according to this report that we have, Imam Sadiq salam was trying to demonstrate a proof upon Abu Hanifa to say that look, what you are saying is wrong. What you are saying is not factual. Thanking the messenger does not amount to shirk because you are not considering him as an independent power from Allah. Um, and you are saying that of course he is dependent on Allah and that any abilities he has is from Allah. So what? after listening to these verses, it says from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, Abu Hanifa says what? He says, by Allah, it seems that I had never read or heard someone reciting these verses of the Holy Quran before. So now after this, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he exposes the lie of Abu Hanifa and he says, no, it's not like that. You have heard these verses, Abu Hanifa. You know, do not speak rubbish to me. You have not only heard these verses before, but also have read them. However, Allah says for you and people like you, Will they not meditate? Will they not ponder on the Qur'an? Or are there locks on their hearts? Nay, but that which they have earned is rust upon their hearts. So what we take from this story is that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam used this verse from Surah At-Tawbah to show that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa by the permission of Allah azza wa jal can enrich people. And he used this as a proof against Abu Hanifa, who accused him of shirk. And what we see is that this phenomenon, um, this trend of accusing people of polytheism is not limited to those who refer to themselves as uh, Salafis, the Wahhabis. No, uh, this is not limited to the Nawasib. Back in that time, from this narration from our books, we see that even the Imams, peace be upon them, themselves were, were, was, were accused of shirk. So if they're accused of shirk, then what about us these days? Of course, these Nawas will come and say that you are committing polytheism. So let's finish up for this verse, verse 14, of chapter 35 of the Holy Quran. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ So on the day of judgment, these idols will disassociate from you and from your polytheism. How can this be when they were dead? Dear brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal, he uses the rhetorical device of personification. What is personification? The attribution of a personal nature or human characteristic to something non-human or the representation of an abstract quality in human form. So we see many times or we see within the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, He shows that even on the day of judgment, you can find in chapter 41 verse uh, 22 that people's limbs will testify against them even the walls can tend to testify against someone because Allah Azza wa Jal he gives this he makes this happen as a sign so on the day of judgment although these idols they were inanimate Allah some of the Mufassirin the Quranic exegetes say what that Allah will bring them to life these objects which previously had no life, these inanimate objects, in order for them to testify against the polytheists and scorn them for their worship of these inanimate objects. So this is a 
evidence against the Mushrikeen on the Day of Judgment and a form of personification which is from the rhetorical devices used in the Quran by Allah Azzawajal to show the Mushrikeen that these inanimate objects will even disassociate from your shirk. So let's give a final recap upon these verses, dear brothers and sisters. وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ مَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِن قِتْمِيرٍ Those whom you call upon other than Allah, being those idols, false gods, and calling meaning that you worship them, those who you worship, you call upon in worship, they possess not as much as the skin of a date stone. So they don't possess anything, whereas the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even according to the books of the Salafiyya, and according to the ahadith of the Mukhalifin, his mere spit could heal people. He can enrich people according to Surah At-Tawbah by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this verse that these Nawas have come to the Shias in Baqi and accuse them of shirk, actually go against themselves and show how they insult the Prophet Muhammad. So they do not possess anything, basically nothing. إِن تَدَعُوهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُوا دُعَاءَكُمْ وَلَوْ سَمِعُوا مَسْتَجَابُوا لَكُمْ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ وَلَا يُنَبِّئُكَ مِثْلُ خَبِيرٌ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكْفُرُونَ بِشِرْكِكُمْ So Allah says, what if you call upon them? These inanimate objects, they will not hear you. So this is not talking about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we'll discuss in the later episodes, or the pious awliya, saying that they cannot hear their dead. This is talking about these inanimate, these inanimate objects, they will not hear your call. And even if they heard, so they will not hear your call and your worship to them, they would not answer you and on the day of judgment they will deny your partnership and your polytheism. And none can inform you like the one who is aware. So Allah brings them to life, these inanimate objects, and makes them testify against the polytheists who worship them. So dear brothers, again we conclude this episode. These verses that the Nawasib have been using can easily be looked up and researched to show that they are giving a superficial, wrong and distorted understanding of the Holy Qur'an and that they are applying verses which apply to polytheists to the Muslims and verses which had a specific context in the time of the Prophet Muhammad and in the time of the Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, um, peace be upon them, for the polytheists. But they come along, they make takfir on everyone, they make them out of the fold of Islam and they use this very shallow, non-academic way of using verses of the Holy Qur'an. So if you call upon them, they will not listen to your call, refers to idols and of course, وَالَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ When we talk about calling, we say that calling according to Arabic dictionaries, according to even the Quranic exegesis of the Mukhalifin refers to ibadah. You call upon someone in worship. You believe that any help that he has is independent from Allah, meaning that he is a God. And none of the Muslims, or at least the Shia, ever say that. The Shia say that any abilities that the Prophet or the Imams have is what? By the grace and permission of Allah. And without Allah, they are not able to do anything which is completely opposite to what the mushrikeen believed about these idols. And inshallah ta'ala, in future, we will discuss this. What was their belief of the idols? Did they believe all the idols were under Allah and that they didn't have independent powers or would they negate certain qualities and attributes of Allah and give it to these idols that they worshipped? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa la'an a'adahum. من هاجنا قرآننا والحق والعدل